Now to the surveillance video that helped get a college student out of charges. Tonight you're going to see that video and you're going to hear from the young man at the center of a case raising fresh questions about campus drinking culture and what exactly constitutes consent. Serious yet necessary conversation that we need to have today. So I suggest and implore you to watch the entirety of this video so you can understand the premise as well as the solutions that can impact you and be value add within your life. But you must understand, and I don't care if you're a teenager, if you're a young adult, or if you are a 40 year old man, you must understand that you are guilty until proven innocent if a woman was to levy a charge of an S assault or S allegation or just assault in general. But you also need to understand that there's things that you can do, actions that you can take in order to reduce the risk of not only the allegations being thrown your way, but also how you can remedy the situation completely. We are currently still in a hashtag believe all women error, which a woman who is a liar can leverage as power to throw you under the bus for her to save faith while also painting herself as the victim. The story that we're gonna go over today is that of Armand Primji, who was a USC student who was falsely accused, jailed, and then expelled from his institution. But thankfully, they had the video evidence to prove that the allegations were a lie. Now, in doing research for the con video, we found that this thing was happening all over the country, where young men were being accused of the most horrible, heinous crimes against women, being found not guilty, and the school still expelling them because believe all women. Mm. And the only thing that saved these guys from long prison sentences was the videotape. Now, to help me tell this story, I brought in a friend of mine, Chandler Remington, from the YouTube channel Remy Legal. She also has a great video where she interviewed Saif Khan on her channel. So, Remy, let us know what's going on. This is 20-year-old Arman Karim Premji. He's a student at USC, and he was born in Mumbai, Maharashtra, India. He attended the University of Southern California to pursue a bachelor's degree in business administration. He joined Kappa Sigma fraternity at USC. Premji went to a local bar and started hanging out with some friends, and he met 19-year-old fellow student, Arshia. They met at this club near campus, but Armand says his accuser was the aggressor, coming on to him the moment she saw him. She put her arms around my neck, she started kissing me. Right, th right away? Uh, within two minutes of us meeting for the first time. He says she wanted to leave the club and have sex with him. We blurred her face to protect her identity. Notice there that she is pulling him. So eventually, Premji goes back to her place, they have sex, and then this happens. According to the police report, the young woman's roommates walked into the dorm room shortly after one in the morning and witnessed the couple having sex in the common living room. But roughly an hour later, the roommates walked out of their rooms to see the woman lying nude and passed out. After we were done having sex, I went to use the restroom, and when I came back out, the roommates looked at me, they seemed, you know, very upset by the fact that and I had just had in the living room. Her now, it wasn't me who bleeped out her name. Notice how these mainstream news reporting outlets will go out of their way to protect the identity of those that are throwing the accusation. Roommates told police, Premji said, we were wasted and she was all over me. According to the police report, after Premji left, the roommates tried to wake her up, but couldn't. When the young woman finally woke up at the hospital, she remembered nothing asking investigating officers in tears how someone could have done this to her. Premji was arrested and charged with by use of drugs and sexual penetration by a foreign object. Premji was released on $200,000 bail. All along, he said the encounter was consensual. $200,000 bail. Think about the craziness of this situation. Just based off of an Accusation. He said, she said, he was in jail with a $200,000 bail. Thank God it's apparent that he comes from some type of money so he can get out in order to contact lawyers in order to fight this case. But the majority of men will have to sit and rot in a jail cell without proper representation to prepare to tell his side of the story. You are guilty until proven innocent when it comes to these types of allegations because hashtag believe all women 
tells everybody to just believe all women. So now because she regretted what she did and she was faced with potential public embarrassment, whether it be from her friends that found her in the living room or from other people that are gonna know about the situation because college campuses like this, especially like a Yale, word is gonna travel fast. And instead of facing the music or facing the embarrassment from her decision, she's gonna throw you under the bus ruin your life because she regretted a decision that she consented to. This is the danger of empowering ideas such as believe all women without listening to the other side of the story. But let's listen from a lawyer's perspective why men are just automatically assumed to be the aggressor in these situations. Now, what do you do? Both people have been drinking, both people are probably drunk, and now they have sex. So why would the police just presumptively charge the male in this situation over the female? Mm. Well, Chandler explains. So I went through the California public university system and I took some courses in which they taught us if you are the aggressor, if you are the initiator of sexual contact, uh, when both individuals are drunk, then you will be charged uh, with a crime, essentially. So as you just heard, it really depends on if police can determine who was the aggressor in this particular incident. And because in the vast majority of these assault cases, it's the male that's the aggressor, police presumptively believe that it's the male who's the aggressor. So you heard that correct. They can throw you in jail, stack on a bail that you can't meet off of the presumption of your gender. You would think that they would be able to do that after they had proof of a situation, right? And potentially, not only will you get a fair shake, but then also you may have evidence held against the original claim. Primji claims that detectives withheld video evidence showing the alleged victim's intent to pursue S relations with him and that they failed to show this footage to witness during questioning. They had video camera footage from the very start, Primji said. They suppressed evidence that could have basically changed my life. The lawsuit, now this is the lawsuit that Primji levied on the city of LA, also claimed that the police officers improperly influenced the alleged victim and her roommates through suggestive questioning. The alleged victim's roommates served as witnesses in this case. And it's just so crazy to me, because listen, at the end of the day, these women or these roommates know exactly what type of woman that she is. They've seen the amount of times that she's come home with different men. They've watched her while out in the club. They've seen this bad behavior. They've seen how she acts with alcohol before this. So now Premji was charged and he was looking at some real serious time in prison. But as I keep saying, thank God for the videotape. Mm. Because as soon as the judge got his eyes on that videotape, it told a different story. Premji wasn't the aggressor, it was actually the 19-year-old female. It happens all too often. Two college students drinking too much and heading off to have sex. We were just drinking, having a good time. But was the woman in this case, a 19-year-old University of Southern California student, too drunk to give consent? This surveillance video appears to show her making the first move at the college bar Banditos. The video shows Premji and a female student kissing in the bar's back corner, her arms around his neck. Premji said she kept pulling him closer, and after several minutes, she led him by the hand out of the bar. Surveillance footage outside shows her making a sexual gesture to her friend behind Armand's back. She made a gesture to her friend uh, of her plans to have intercourse with me that night. Premji says they had both been drinking. The two are seen leaving in an Uber before arriving to the girl's dorm room. Security video there shows the alleged victim stopping to sign him in. So in a Facebook message to Premji a day later, the accuser says she was told she was with him the Friday before that and that we hooked up, although she didn't use the words hooked up. She goes on to say that she doesn't remember because she was very obviously out of it. So then Premji and his attorneys got that video and presented it to the judge. And the judge wrote a scathing opinion, mm, good. chastising the prosecutors. So a court transcript from a hearing shows Judge Michael Pastor telling prosecutors they couldn't even meet their minimal pretrial burden of reasonable suspicion against Premji in light of the video evidence. I looked at the totality of the evidence in this case not any individual aspect of evidence, he said. And as I evaluate the totality of evidence from the initial encounter between Arshia, the accuser, and the defendant, Mr. Premji, I believe that there was consent and that there remained consent throughout the unfortunate incidents in this case. 
Look at all the evidence. You have her making sexual uh, hand gestures behind him caught on camera. You have her in video evidence signing him in. He's not forcing her to be signed in, but she's willfully signing her in. It's caught on camera. She first interacts with him. It's caught on camera. She's kissing him. It's caught on camera that she's dragging him all over the club. But the key within all of this is that it was on camera. If none of this was on camera, he would still be sitting in a jail cell right now. And to think that a liar like this that can cause so much chaos within a person's life has no charges placed upon her. And in fact, the news media outlets will actually block out her name to protect her identity is beyond me. They should be held accountable and if found guilty, should be given the same time that the alleged criminal would have received. There is no indication of any withdrawal of consent. There is a very strong indication that the alleged victim in this case was the initiator of any conduct between the defendant and the alleged victim. One can speculate, one can surmise, but that is not the kind of evidence upon which I rely and which I do not find to be convincing. I base my decision on the underlying direct and circumstantial evidence and credibility issues. Video surveillance cameras are everywhere, it seems, these days, and one USC college student is very grateful that they are. Based on that footage, he's been acquitted in a case that could have landed him in jail. As Jim Murray reports, the judge saw the video and decided that, in fact, the woman who called herself a victim was the initiator of a sexual encounter. Now, even though the judge threw it out based on there not being enough evidence, USC thought differently. In March 2018, USC's Office of Equity and Diversity found Premji guilty anyway, it expelled him after he was cleared of the charge by a criminal court judge. He had six credits left to graduate. So Premji sued USC and mm -hmm. USC was on the heels of losing the case and decided to reinstate Premji so he can get his degree and pay some undisclosed amount. All right, so now that we've gone through the totality of this case, I wanna leave you guys with some lessons, some solutions for you. Number one, first and foremost, do not ever, 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 ever take home drunk women from the bar or the club. The chance or the opportunity of her insides is not worth what she can do later if she's faced with embarrassment and regret and chooses to become a victim. The laws around consent when it involves drinking is such a damn gray area, but within this gray area, men are considered guilty until proven innocent, so it's not even a risk that you would wanna take. Number two, let's say that it's not just like a one night stand, you just picking up a random floozy from the bar. Let's say that you know the girl for a little bit, you know, friends of friends, maybe you've dated one or two dates or something like that, and you have reason to believe that she's of good character, but you're just still not sure yet. And let's say that there's a little bit of drinking involved. Ensure that there's people around that can corroborate a story, talk with the bartender, shit, maybe even if your friends are there, so that later on, if something goes awry, they can give testimony to what they saw. Number three, and I get a lot of flack for saying what I'm about to say right now is, Put up cameras in your goddamn crib. They are not that expensive. I think of them as an insurance policy. Make sure that it's HD and make sure that sound is enabled. Number four, if you get arrested, do not say a damn thing. Wait till you get in contact with representation, a lawyer, because anything that you say to recount the story at that time will be used against you later on. And if things are cross-referenced and things do not make sense, then it's going to paint you in a bad light. If you put all of these tactics in motion, you will significantly reduce the chances of something like this happening to you. I got dudes in my life that have had false accusers come their way and it's ruined big opportunities. But just like before you go drive a vehicle, you put on your seatbelt to ensure safety, ensure that you are taking steps within your life to protect yourself. Because when shit hits the fan, it's you versus believe all women. Questions, comments, concerns. Y'all already know what to do. Me, Ogre, Turtles, and Reviews at gmail.com. Any y'all out there, if y'all got extra tips, Put them down in the comment box down below to help out the community. Last but not least, there's a link down in the description box down below to join my self-development community. It's absolutely free to join. Go down there, beam up, and connect with the brotherhood. Until next time, YouTube.